Oh, okay. I've got the option to leave the meeting or continue. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to CV Freaks podcast. And this is episode 17. And uh, I'd like to welcome my guest, Dan Hayhurst from Sculpture on the left, and Edmund Davy, aka Extractor Fam. Hello. Hello. Hello, guys. Um, Hi. So I was really excited when I was just looking back at the episodes to make sure I said the right number because this is episode 17 that I've been doing this for a whole year and wow. uh yeah well obviously because <laughs> but uh I'm super happy to have you both as my guests you guys are over in London right now you got your systems so I kind of would like to see you give a little walk through each of you if you can I mean obviously you don't have to lift it up but if you want to talk about some of the modules you have in there uh, and some of your favorite things going on. And Edmund, do you want to start? Yeah, I can start. Uh, I've got, here I've got the very wonderful Pamela's new workout. One of my favorite bits and I use it for almost everything. When I first, when I first got my Euro rack things, I thought I was just going to make a box to produce weird sounds. But then when I got this, I realized that I could um, use it to make everything go in time and run different, a few sequences in, at the same tempo and make things modulate in time. And then I realized like you can make a whole piece of music inside the modular. And then if you use this also wonderful make noise woggle bug, as the master clock, then all the modulations are in time and you can do all sorts of funny stuff with that as well. Uh, and speaking of sequences, I've got this, uh, it's called a variegate, which is a really cool sequencer for doing drum loops. With. Yeah, that's Maleko, right? That's right, yeah. yeah. Uh, you, can, you can alter the probability for all the steps and get it to do little variations, which I really like. Uh, interesting. <clears throat> I've got all this catalyst stuff that's clones of old Bupla circuit, which uh, I think are really cool, especially the oscillator. Well, it's too oscillated, actually. Uh, have their, uh, little, their little quirks and sound really good. What else have I got? I've got this, uh, I've got two noise engineering oscillators. Uh, that make all kinds of interesting, complicated sounds. Uh, they're digital, so. Yeah, I like them. Is it the Bazalus Itris one? One's called the uh, Manis Iteritas, mm -hmm. which uh, is one of the ones that has the percussion function on it. So that's useful, but it's also, well, it's probably better just as a straight up noisy oscillator. Got the ad hoc oscillator, just simple but intuitive. And I've got this ornament and crime thing uh, that does all various sort of sequencing, like quantizing. Got loads of different modes. Most of them are really cool. <laughs> yeah. And the, the same people do this other sequencer called Tempsey Teal, mm -hmm. which is quite handy. It can be a bit fiddly, but it has also has some interesting possibilities. Yeah. And I've got pressure points, which I usually run as a sequencer. Uh, I don't use the, you know, pressure points. <laughs> oh, you don't you don't touch the little touch pads? Not that often, no. Or I do for selecting a stage, but not to go like, Mwah, you know, mm -hmm. use the pressure. And I've got another ad hoc thing that's like a crossfader. It's called the transition controller. So you can change like five different parameters with one crossfader. Well, okay. Two ad hoc right. modules. What's that, sorry? So you got two ad hoc modules in there? I've got this mixer as well. Uh, it's my favorite mixer. It's made by ad hoc. Um, it's just a really useful mixer. Uh, that's also got five VCAs in it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I use for a lot of the drum sounds. 
And here I've got a Three Sisters filter by Mannequin, made by Mannequin, which is uh, also very interesting. I often use it more as a, you know, um, I like your shirt. I just noticed okay. all the faces on there. It's a nice filter, but you can use it as an oscill uh, oscillator with three sine wave outputs that make these really funny, spooky chords that I think have quite a distinctive mm -hmm. Uh And then on Mannequin's Just Friends, which uh, it does so many different modes. I don't understand it at all, even though I've had it for ages and I've read the manual. I still don't know how, <laughs> how to use it. Uh, you know most of the things that it does but it's also it's a really cool oscillator that you can detune and make chords and different kinds of chords and those are different waveforms and what have you and then make noise maths uh they told me at the shop that i had to buy one of those oh yeah they're legendary yeah they wouldn't let me leave the shop until i bought one of these oh uh, london modular yeah mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, I think those kind of modules are really great. They're so versatile. They can do almost anything. Yeah, totally. You can use it as a big, really funny, simple sequence there and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, Edmund, it's so cool the way that we met, actually, because I was doing an internship with that little uh, sound system company. Maybe you don't even remember when we met. I do remember. Really. Oh, yeah. Cafe yeah, you did this crazy noise thing, yeah. and it was so loud, and it sounded so insane. And painful. Uh, painful, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, uh, I didn't have any. I didn't have any um, modular synth stuff back then. Nope, and that's uh, why I call I you my protege. Thank you. I was using a uh, very all very cheap. And also quite broken uh, equipment for that show. Yeah, so that old that gen. Was I explained remember what possibly the noise factor and also the pain factor. Yeah, and I loved when you uh, did those cassette things too. Getting into modular synth, I had to buy a, my first case of uh, a modular synth enthusiast. I happen to know, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, it's just become like as addicted as anyone else to buy loads of Euro rack, and I think it's great. And it's quite cool the way that you buy them all. You do um, busking on the river outside the Tate Modern, uh, writing poems yeah. for people, and that's how you pay for your modules, right? Pretty much. Yeah. It's a pretty amazing story. No. So Maybe one of those people who bought your poems will come across this and they'll be like, oh, wow, that's great. Probably not. Well, if you are watching and you bought a poem off me on the Thames, please come back and buy some more. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a nice, like, universal transaction. You know, put some poetry right. into the world and get some synth modules. Now you see yeah. what you see, where the money's going, so. Yeah. Okay, Dan, Dan, sorry, Dan, Dan, it's your turn. You give us a little uh, run through yeah. of what you got, well, what's your favorite? You know, I, got, I got into, I got into modular stuff because um, I, I, for ages, I wasn't at all bothered about synthesizers. I just thought they were a bit, bit crap. I wasn't really that interested. Uh, I was really into sampling. I was really into like tape, tape recorders and tape loops and stuff like that. And then I sort of started thinking, oh, you know, I'm a bit bored of just sampling kind of wibbly noises. I wouldn't mind like making some of the synths. So I got to make noise O coast. And then that was the gateway thing. And then I realized that you could probably, if, you, if, if there was such a thing as a sampler that worked with CVs, that would be like a really elegant way to kind of like squirt kind of like sound kind of elements around in this kind of like quite free way. 
So, and then uh, Morphogene came out. I didn't know anything about modulars at the time, so I didn't know that, you know, there'd been a, the other version of that, Phonogene, but Morphogene came out. I was like, wow, oh my God, this is the thing that I was kind of like, that I really thought, I'll give that a go. And that, that so, so that was the first thing that I got in the rack was the Morphogene, and I was running that with uh, modulation from the Oak Coast and then uh, Wogglebog, because uh, I'm really into like random stuff. One of the things that I think that I find about uh, being a musician is that I always feel like I'm kind of not really a very good one. <laughs> like I don't know, I don't have like a strategy for making music. I don't, I don't really have, I kind of do it in the moment. I'm not very good at thinking ahead. And so I really always enjoy kind of like having some sort of like system of like where you create, you have these circumstances where you might find some music it just might appear you might stop it might some random things might come together and you'll think right yeah that's it and you somehow capture that that's what i sort of wanted to do with neurorack stuff really so i had so it, there's not much in the way of sequences i've got a rene that i use very little usually just the keyboard actually <laughs> um there's a uh like i say morphogene copper filters frames which i really like which is a mutable instruments thing where you Kind of, it's a bit like you program presets and then it morphs between them. It's a little bit like the uh, the the is that, was that Adak that mixer mm. the Adak uh, mixer that Edmund was saying where you you assign four different outputs uh, to various modulation points and you twist the dial and it just <laughs> brilliant it just throws it all over the place you know so that's really nice although at the moment it's in like this weird quad LFO mode and I can't remember how to get it out of it <laughs> I need to look that up in, in manual. <laughs> But that's really good as well. It's like a wavetable uh, thing that, with these weird interactions, that and it just spews out all these really crazy modulations. And you kind of like you're. It's like you're sort of. It's a bit like if you're scanning through the radio looking for some cool kind of thing, and you it, you hit on some kind of frequency point where something amazing is happening, and it's kind of like it was a gift from nowhere. You know, like mm -hmm. I really love that, and it's one of the things I most like about like modular stuff, you know. Hmm. Uh, oscillators, I've got a Maleco Richter oscillator, which is like the wired one, which is just really nice fat oscillator. Uh, marbles was the, was one of the last ones I bought, which is another mutable thing, which is a little bit like a Turing machine kind of thing, um, but also like a really good kind of clock um, generator and kind of like it's that you know you can sample like rhythms and sample uh, CV sequences, so you end up with these uh, slowly sort of mutating uh, melodies and rhythms. Another, it's brilliant for people like me that can't that don't understand music. <laughs> well, it kind of generates things, and you but then you you can latch it onto something that's really good, you know. Um, Bit, and uh, you know, one of the things I always used to do was get like a big pile of tapes that I just bought off eBay and put them in a bin bag and just pull them out at random and just cut them up with scissors. And you know, I always look for the same sort of thing that you can do with like electronics as well. I mean, and modules like that where it kind of like it, it finds something that you can kind of sample it. I just love that, you know. Yeah, yeah. The thing um, you're saying about the tuning of the tuning them like through a radio, it really mm -hmm. feels like that on a lot of different occasions. Uh, yeah. Experiment. Yeah, you're, you're kind of scanning, aren't you? And you're trying to find something and then it, it gives you something. It feels like you were given a gift. Something unique. Like I called them in my PhD paper, the sweet spots. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Precisely. Um, yeah, you're like island hopping somehow between in, in, in all this sort of chaos, and you find uh, yeah, some something. And uh, yeah, most uh, oh, I have a, a, a noise engineering thing, I have the Bacillimus Interpretus, whatever it is, alter, which is which everyone uses as a drum synth, but I find this makes a really, really beautiful electric piano, and I kind of use it more for that than, than percussion a lot of the time because you get this like a bit like the synths on the, the electric pianos on Ralph and Florian or cluster albums, like from the seventies, it's got this lovely sort of uh, wonky kind of seventies electronic sort of sound that I really love. Uh, there's a Piston Honda 2 in there. Love. love. I use that quite a lot. Yeah. 
Amazing. I don't have a lot of stuff. This is it. That's you know because I I have um. I don't have any space. <laughs> <laughs> Get another. We moved into the living room here, but you know it's like uh, normally I'm in the corner of a bedroom and uh, which is yeah. which is all right. I don't mind that. I sit there looking out the window. Uh, I'm on the fourth floor of a block of flats. I just watch people walking up and down the road and buses going past, just plink plonking. It's good. <laughs> Well, I'm super honored to have both of you, and thank you again so much. Um, and for those of you out there who are watching who might not know, Dan Hayhurst has a partner um, who does visuals that they have a, a duo called Sculpture. And I've seen them perform live, and it was really mind-blowing. It was a really, really good show. But that was all the way back in 2016. I'm sure you guys have evolved a lot since then. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, so yeah, probably, uh, I think we're still just doing the same thing <laughs> in slightly different, uh, it's, you know, slightly different permutations. Uh, yeah, I work with an animator video artist called Ruben Sutherland, and he really, uh, he does a lot of animation using a turntable, so filming stuff, rotating on a turntable and animating using the, the frame rate of the camera as a kind of uh, sort of zoetrope kind of mechanism. Um, and he, I think his approach to visuals is very similar to my ideas about music. It's like looking for rhythms and patterns and finding some sort of pattern in the chaos. Yeah, and they're like full of color and they're full of pictures and he just changes them as you're going along. It's a great, great thing. He's, he, he's, he's just got, it's, it's, an, it's an instrument. It's sorts. a really neat thing. I've never seen it. I've never seen anyone else do that. It's his thing. <laughs> <clears throat> Pretty good. And uh, Edmund, Edmund and I did a, a performance together, a collaborative performance at my last CV Freaks event in London 2019. And it was super fun. It was really late in the day and we were the last people. So it was a little bit heavy, but it was, it was fun. And I love the way he, he does stuff. So I'm really excited to see your guys' jam if you want to. Did you do that down in Waterloo? Yes. yes. Oh, the, the House of Vans skate park. Oh, the House of Vans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to one of the secret things. Uh, oh, you did? When Ned Rush played. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's yeah. great. He's really yeah. great. Yeah, he yeah, played yeah. two of my events. <laughs> he's practically famous. <laughs> <laughs> he's a YouTube sensation. Yeah, I mean, did you see his latest thing? The how to make a horror sci-fi thing in one minute? It's like, oh yeah. Oh no, I, I, I uh, yeah, he's, I, I, he's good. I, I'm a fan. He's hilarious. I've got his t-shirt. His t-shirt. I, I got his t-shirt. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. I, we've all got them. He's, uh, he's on. Uh, see, that's the, That's his. That's his plan to take over first YouTube and then the world. I think. Yeah, he's got to do the masks then. You know, get the Ned Rush mask. <laughs> And the whole face, not just the, you know. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you guys want to start with the jam? Yeah, we've not planned anything, have we? No, we, well, we that's the know. best that always comes out the best. Out. Is that the audio output? Oh, it's a clock. Uh, before we do that, let's just um, listen. I wanted to play you this uh, something, it's piano sound. Mm -hmm. That's the piano sound I was talking about from the Basimala Ceteritas Alta. Do you guys have a little more volume? Uh, 
close that. Sorry. It may be a little quiet, do you think? You want it to be, you want it to be quieter, or you want it to be louder? It's fine, quiet. Quiet. Oh, you like it that way. It doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> quiet. Can't hear. It's pretty dope, guys. That's the first part of the jam. We're, okay. we're recording to this um, tape recorder. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason the sound is like really lo-fi and weird, because it's all just coming out of this. Um, <laughs> ah. We quite like that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what it sounds like on the, on the recording. But the other nice thing about that is we can just, we can just listen back to it at double speed, and it's probably twice. Really? That's it? The whole thing? In that one second? Not even a second. Oh, who built that? It's well, it's uh, it's it's um, it's a good uh, it's a good German uh, uh, model. Uh, the company is called Juha, and they used to the BBC used to buy all these tape recorders, so it's probably one of those. But it's a nice. It's uh, probably like uh, maybe. 70s or 80s stereo model good but this is one of the uh, i mean i love to do this with um i don't know maybe it's not very purist with with modular stuff but it's kind of like i always think that i like to cut out that <laughs> i like to to jump from one thing to another do you know what i mean that's the one thing that i find it obviously it's really difficult with like modular gear so i really love to use like the time recorder as this like uh, the tape recorder as this like time Job, time machine where you just cut it and you jump and you kind of you're you're cutting up the, your time into these packets and kind of it's a bit of a trick <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? i love that and mixing that vintage quality and yeah. so uh, and uh, i think edmund is recording um like live jams on cassettes right yeah mm -hmm. i record a modular to Cassette four track all the time. I think it sounds really great. Yeah. 
That's really cool. Yeah, I've never done that. Well, I think you did it once when I was over there having a jam with you. Um, right. I don't have the cassette, obviously. <laughs> we'll do another think, one. Uh, electronic sound works really well on cassette, like better than uh, recording guitars or drum kits or whatever. Because the sound, you know, the waveforms are kind of quite basic in a way. It sounds so they, amazing. They come across really well with the uh, cassette quality, to me anyway. Uh, it's, it's much different. It's interesting that, isn't it? I mean, I don't think, I wouldn't say like I was like an analog period, despite the fact I'm here like recording on a tape recorder or whatever. Just that, yeah, yeah, a tape recorder through Zoom, you know? <laughs> it's like, it's a good aesthetic. I think it's more, I mean, for me, it's more to do with like the sort of physical, um, like putting it in the physical world, but if you, uh, I mean, sort of the obvious thing with a tape, you know, is like that, that you can, um, that you can physically manipulate a tape. You can slow it down, speed it up or stop it or do that kind of like scratchy thing with it. Um, but I think it's just more like if you, you like need to use your body to sort of make music a bit. You need to move around and be in the physical. There needs to be some sort of physical manifestation of it. So it's all, I mean, it's quite easy to like make like an analog sound in like digital. That sounds amazing, right? There are amazing plugins that are brilliant emulations of analog gear. But you don't need an analog piece of equipment to sound analog. But you need an you need a you need a machine if. You, that's in the physical world if you want to do something physical with it. So to me, it's more a difference between physical and virtual than it is analog and digital, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. It's more fun to be interacting with the, with the instrument, well, with the machine. Yeah. It's, yeah. Well, it's yeah. just, it, it's like an important technique or something. It's rather, you know, I mean, I, I, I can go into like a, a plugin for hours and be very happy, <laughs> you know, it's fine. Uh, but it's, but I feel that it's not, uh, you know, especially like in performance, I kind of, if you, if you haven't got anything to sort of uh, hit, <laughs> like, you know, I, there's, there's always a bit where you go, I don't know what to do now. And if you've got an instrument or a, or a physical thing, you can just do, I don't know, just waggle it. You know? <laughs> That's very difficult if it's all just, not, uh, I don't know, what do you think about that with synths? Do you think that having, a, I mean, synths, there's usually something you can do with a... It's definitely more fun to manipulate, yeah. Um, but still, I mean, as soon as I saw a picture of a modular synth on the internet, I was like, wow, I have to get, I really need, would love to have one of those. That's such a dream uh, object. And I never felt that about a piece of software, uh, mm -hmm. even remotely the same way. And it's like, Dan, you know, it's like you were saying about um, t twiddling, tuning the radio, uh, trying to find something that sounds good. I used to make music by playing four cassettes on four tape decks at once and collaging stuff so that the idea was I wouldn't necessarily know what was going to happen. And I think all this modular stuff is a really good format for not knowing what's going on. <laughs> but, before, but also, you made like some really amazing music in Reason. You, when I first when I first met you, you were using re only Reason. Yeah. And you, yeah. And you're like a complete. Uh, Virtuoso. Really. Oh, thank you, Dan. Uh, I'm going to blush in a minute. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I've spent way too many hours at a laptop screen and I don't really want to spend any more. Uh, I mean, it was great. Uh, it, like when I realized, oh, you know, I can use this software to make all the sounds, all the drums and all the, any, all the stuff that I can, that I want to put on my tune. Obviously that was really cool. But um, after a while, I was so sick of just sitting with sore eyes and sore back, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> using a, turning up at shot gigs with a laptop. You know, I think I've really um, that's really run its course. Well, I showed you guys a little bit of this before, but I just want to show you something really cool about this: is that they put the keys. Oh, sorry, guys, everybody. This is the Maleco Manther. They put just the keyboard here. Just these white and black, and you can just push the button, and it has a nice little touch, and it gives you the note, and it goes crazy. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, the, uh, the layout in the top right of the, the 
the envelope and the uh, amplifier there is really like the 101, Roland 101, it really looks like that. Oh yeah, could have some some uh, nods back to that old stuff. Yeah, I mean. that's, a, that's a pretty good synth. Yeah. One of the things that I also really like uh, about like the morphogene is the way that you, you know you can resample things from like the physical realm, like a tape or whatever, and then like sort of digitize it and control that with uh, clocks from the thing as well. So I mean, a lot of the things I do, I just have all these kind of like, um, you know, I don't know, just like this, which is like some old country record. Mm -hmm. But if you run, if you run the clock through it, it just starts stretching it out in time, and then you can synchronize all kinds of other stuff to the same clock. Is that the morphogen you have there, the black one? That's what that's doing. This is the. You can really stretch it out. It's just beautiful. I love that. And these kind of, they become these weird choirs if you run it through like a... Uh, that wasn't very pleasant. <laughs> but it's spring and it just becomes this like quite celestial sort of feedback and then we record that I don't know I just like this conversation between like the uh, I don't know stuff you find that was recorded like 50 years ago or something and then feed it to the machines you know yeah it's super wicked so do you guys want to play a little bit more or a little bit yeah. Yeah. might need to edit a bit out while we fart about <laughs> Nah. Nah, it's just leave right. it. It's all good. <laughs> Do you want a clock from me? Uh, it's just the clock. I don't seem to be getting a clock out of that. But... So if you get... Um... Yeah?
Hmm. Seems to be rejecting a lot of that audio. Guys? That's the end of the tape. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool, you guys. I mean, it cut out for a little bit. It was a little bit quiet, so I'm not okay. sure. But yeah, that's okay. And I think you guys should definitely do a live set together at the next CV Freaks London, if you want. Right. Yeah, that sounds good, right? I'd love to. Anything Maybe I'll happen. play with you guys too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's hey. really cool. That's going to be in December, right? I think I'm, I'm trying to plan it for December, okay. yeah. December. Awesome. December. Nice to see you. It's going to be fantastic. Um, yeah, I mean, just, uh, you know, use, use whatever's usable from the audio and, and don't worry okay. about it. Okay, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I, the thing about this that I've done is like a really cool, like informal, no editing kind of thing. Not yeah. because I'm lazy, but because I just kind of like doing it that way. I think, I really like that too. I think that's a really good. Um, yeah, it's like real, good. it's free. Real. Know. Yeah, it's real. It's what we're it's doing real. right now. <laughs> Sorry, that's terrible. <laughs> um, uh, oh, is there anything you guys want to tell me about? Like, tell everybody about an upcoming release, album, something else uh, like that? Well, um, project. Uh, yeah, I do. I've got a record coming out. I have. I've got a record coming out. I uh, forgot about that. <laughs> um, oh, I'm such a pro, especially at the pro self promotion game. Um, I've got a record coming out on a label called LTR Records uh, in July. And I think maybe you can even pre order it from next Friday. It's called Counters. And it's, um, it's a solo record. So it's. <sighs> It's it, <laughs> it's uh, it, it's funny. It's kind of like I have this duo with Ruben Sculpture, and that's kind of like our main project. And it's very much to do with playing live. And we've done a lot of records and stuff. And there's uh, audio visual stuff like vid film and video. And also we've done a, a graphic novel and all this kind of stuff. And then I've got this solo record, which is kind of like exactly the same. And Ruben did the artwork. And it's kind of like, what is the difference between that and sculpture? I don't know. I always feel like sculpture is like air elemental and my stuff is like earth elemental. So it's kind of like this uh, earth elemental electronic uh, cassette and digital release. It's very, there's loads of modular stuff on it, um, but kind of pretty strange. Uh, yeah. Super cool. It's, I can't wait to hear it. Yeah, well, I think you can hear it next Thursday. Well, um, I want to put a link to that video that you showed me. Uh, 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 yeah, let me email you. Uh, do you mean fanfic telepresence or? Yeah, whole... that amazing thing that you sent, the triangle. I'll send and... you a link to the, uh, the, the long version on YouTube. There's a long version and then there's like this a bit that's cut out of the middle that's kind of like the pop bit. <laughs> 
it's the pop hit in the middle, which is like, and it's all good. The long version's good. The short version's good. I'll send you through the URLs. Cool. I'm gonna include those in the uh, comments on the. Okay. I mean, uh, I mean not the Thank comments. The, yeah, this part. I'll send you the under... URL on my SoundCloud yeah, as well yeah, yeah, because yeah. there's yes. a lot of hundred percent modular music recorded uh, onto cassette tape. Uh, tunes on my new SoundCloud. So. Fantastic. Yes. Uh, so thank you both. Thank you both for taking the time to talk to me and everybody today. And uh, we're going to see you guys soon and Thanks keep on you. with your uh, amazing work. Yeah, All you right. too. Thank we'll look you. forward to seeing you in London. Thanks, yeah. everybody. Thanks everybody for well, watching. Florida. If you if you love me, you can support me on Patreon. This is how you do the love like that. Okay, see you guys soon. Okay, everybody, bye. bye.